All right, Tom. So here's the deal. Uh, I need you to uh, introduce yourself. Just tell everybody who you are. I'm Tom, and I do course marketing. <laughs> You're on top, right? Everything's going well. You start getting lazy. Then at some point, people start passing you by. Yes. Or things um, stop working as they should be. Then we start dropping. Then we go into the, like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. Now I got to start hustling again. You know, the old shit cycle. Figure things out. And that's the cycle we want to be in as short as possible. Yes. And then we go back on, oh, things are working again. <laughs> things are getting better, easier. And then we get back to the top. And then again, we get lazy. And it's it's like a you know creative cycle, right? Like, I think the only thing we can try to do is be in the oh shit cycle the least amount of time, right? We're still going to get there every single time. Like things will change, right? Yes. So there's always going to be something like it's disrupting us or, you know, but... So you're at that cycle now. You're at that, like, I'm lazy now and I'm, you know, people may be passing me by. Things are changing. Moving to the, oh, shit, I got to change something. You know, you're probably not there yet. No. But if you continue being stagnant, you will be at the, oh, shit cycle at some point. You know, um, I think, like, I had a friend uh, ask a question in a, in a group and she said, like, what have you done, you know, so far in 2023? And I said, absolutely nothing. You know, and I'm cool with that. <laughs> well, it all depends on on like even the cycle of the year you're in, right? Like, yeah, she cycle might be into like I yeah. fucked around quarter four, so I got a hustle in January. You might have been in the I worked my ass off, had my best months in November, December. I'm in my thinking month. You know what I mean? Like, so it's yeah. it's difficult it to even yeah. answer those questions. It definitely depends. But one thing I have um, gotten more. And I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm getting ready to get into my late fifties now. I'm in my late fifties. I can't. I know, and it. I and I, I always watch you, man, because you <laughs> you still inspire me at that point. I can't believe this, really. Uh, but uh, you know, I I mean, we all desire to get there, and it's like, okay, yeah, I'm here now, and <laughs> I'm in this transitional phase. Mm. And part of the transition is people are going to pass me. And that's okay to some degree, right? Because I'm on a different level now. I can't, I'm, I'm just not in hustle, hustle mode as much as I was before. Now it's more analytical, um, tactical. That's what I think. I am. I'm way more tactical this time out than I have to okay. be. And I have hustlers around me. So I'm sort of at that point now because you like you know i hustled in my 20s and early 30s exactly, super hard yeah. super hard right but when i think back a lot of this hustling was just nonsense right you know because that's what hustling is you but know, that's you what only you have, have the ability to do yeah but it's just like wasted energy is it wasted i mean you yeah, learned a lot. look sort of man like sort of if Ooh. you're not really strategic with your hustling mm. Do you really learn a lot from a lot of it? You'll learn some, you know, you'll learn a lot of things not to do. Not to do. You know? Yeah. yeah you, you'll, you know, you'll learn like, oh, maybe these goals um, weren't actually my goals to begin with. You know, I just ran after like 10 different rabbits. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's true. It's, that's it's, true. That's yeah, true. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not for hustle culture. Like, look, if you have a clear goal, right? Like one clear goal, you know, you need to get this done. Yeah, you, you hustle, but still, you know, diminishing returns, right? You know, you put in your best yes. four or five hours in a day, and then, you know, you're going to you're gonna be screwing around, looking on Facebook, Zooming. So let's just stop the nonsense and come back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, because there's all, you know, you can't, you can't hustle for 12 hours at that same intensity. I mean, you can take some of the, you know, drugs, like, uh, what is it, like Adderall, Modafinil, yeah. all that stuff, but even with that, that man i've seen i've seen people on that really and they think yeah they think they're smarter than they are 
at the sixth, seventh hour. Like they, you know, in their brain, they're focusing. I'm like, dude, you're like doing nonsense now. Like you're not realizing it. <laughs> oh, but you're focused in on the nonsense. Focused on the nonsense. Yeah. You know, mm. they're, they're focusing on switching tabs. They don't even realize it. You know, and so it's even, even that it's not, I don't know, man. Like I find like good four hours of focused work in a day. It could be the most important thing. I'm done by noon, bro. You, yeah, you can accomplish so much. I can be so done by, by noon. The I most mean, that's important the goal. thing. That's the goal, I think. It's... Like for, for me, it's always been be done by 3.30. Mm-hmm. You know, but but noon is, you know, usually afternoon it's like administrative stuff. So right, that's what I was thinking. It's like the when I say done by noon, it's the yeah. most important work that's yeah. going to move the ball forward for me. And then I get around to doing all the other stuff. And like I said, I'm on the phone a lot with clients and stuff, so I'm thinking on their problems at that time. Yeah. So what what it seems like to me is like you're at that point now. Where you're finally trying to figure out what is my most important problem every day. <laughs> yeah. You just don't want to do extra work. You don't want to do extra work. I don't have the I don't have the bandwidth to do that anymore, Tom. You just don't care too, man. Like, okay. <laughs> Look, this is this is a problem with getting older, man. And I, I've noticed this already with myself. <laughs> I have a hard time finding food I really enjoy because I've ate so much, you know. It's like that bodybuilder, right? That ate steaks for like, you know, se- seven years straight. And he's like, I don't care what kind of steak you give me. It's a it's fucking steak. steak. It's just right. Steak. Yeah. Watching movies is difficult because I've seen so many stories. I know how it works. Like I, I can predict what's going to happen end. too much. Yeah. Right. You know, like I know, I know the flow of the movie now. Right. Right. Books right. are the same thing. Music mm. similar. Right. Because I know I've listened to so much. Like I, I get it. Like, I'm like, okay, I've heard this before. You mix these three things, great. Hmm. So just being older, like, makes you like, well, like, a lot of this stuff I just don't feel like doing or listening or watching or whatever, because you've done it. You know, like, you've probably done, I don't know, 500 different client jobs. Yeah, easy. So every new client is just like, I mean, okay, you're great, you're special, but you're just another client. Hmm. You know, you've done so many speeches, so many flights. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. But I mean, it's another flight and another speech. Like, I I know what's going to happen. Like, what's the outcome? Like, I've seen like, you know, 500 outcomes from each thing I've done. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, yeah, of course, there's going to be always some stupidity that people like show you. They're like, oh, wow, that's different. That's new. (laughs) more are you saying it's more on the stupidity side well well so the things that you do you kind of can predict but there's always going to be some person that's going to like bring some life into yeah. you but like oh i've never seen that before that's interesting yeah, that's interesting Let, yeah. let's put that under a microscope for a second <laughs> that's true <laughs> and that's what you seek out now man that's what you seek out. well <laughs> so before i used to get annoyed with things like that. Now uh, I'm so bored and can predict something. When oh someone does something God. so dumb, I'm, I stop and I'm like, thank you. I've never seen that before. Good. I was not aware a person can pull this off. Come on, Tom. You are not that bored, bro. Come on. You live the life. I know. I and know. by living the life, what else can you give me? Like people I say, oh, know. I want to go to the best beaches in the world, eat the best food, eat this. I've done this for so long. You what live else are you gonna there. Give me? Like what, what better beach can you give me? I've been to the best beach. I've lived by the best beaches for so long. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I get away from the beach because I get bored of the beach. So what's, uh, uh, what's your favorite beach area? I mean, if you go to Krabi, they have some of the best beaches in the world. There's just nothing really that you can... I mean, you can go to the islands a bit more, which is a little more beautiful, you know, away uh-huh. from them because it's even more pristine, but it doesn't get any better. Like there's nothing else you can really hit. You can, you know, probably replace that with a different country, but I mean, it's still going to be a beach with it's clear water, beach. beautiful sand, yeah, yeah, coral reefs, um, different things. And you'll be like, I mean, this is just as good as it gets. Gotta love it. You know, but again, if you're around it so much, you know, like on my third month in Krabi, I don't even look outside much anymore. I just walk through it. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? That's just you be, well. That's kind of the way it becomes, right? Yeah. So then I fly back to America to get annoyed, and I come back much happier. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> America makes you appreciate how great appreciate, the rest of the world is. Oh, yeah, it, it really does. It's sad, man. It's sad. I used to think America was great. Like that's because the late you're, 90s. You're, trained to believe, you're trained that way. Yeah. Yeah. We, but we, I know I like, trained that way. I know where to go to get myself annoyed and appreciate the nice things again. Inside of new inside of America, you mean? Yeah, yeah. There's you know the Midwest, for example. It'll oh, stop. make you it'll make you appreciate life very quickly. <laughs> stop. I am from Dude. the Midwest. Yeah, but I mean, look, I believe you take you. a little, you take a little road trip through the Midwest. It's the best way to appreciate life. You stop in a little town mm-hmm. where the only thing they have is a shitty German restaurant and a Walmart <laughs> in the whole town. You stay there for about five days, and Man, you feel you have so never blessed. Stayed five days in a place with a shitty German restaurant <laughs> at Walmart. Have I you? did. I did. I got to look back on Airbnb. I did. This was on purpose. Wow. Interesting. I've done these trips on purpose, like to really appreciate my life. Mm. That's uh, wow. Well, because you just get to see like, you know, the things that you, it's like the politicians who say like, oh, anyone making less than 250K a year, don't, who are these people? Well, they're not that hard to find. Right. And then yeah. like with us, we're so blessed with things. You go live in the midst of like, you know, some of the, you know, worst off people. And then you're just like, holy shit, I have it good. Yeah. Can you even get a decent pizza around this place? (laughs) I mean, people, a lot of people are struggling, man. A lot of people struggle just for just for day to day things. Yeah, but I'm not really, you know, saying anything about the people. It's just the situation they've they been live. brought up with. Yeah. Yeah. And then they have no desire to leave. Well, look, man, it's not difficult to knock ambition out of people. Mm. It's not that hard, man. If you grow up with no hope, don't see anything, no one around you accomplished anything, you have to be a special person to want to get out. And most people are not special. Interesting. Most people can't even make their own opinion. I never thought the desire to get out was something special. I've kind of thought that that's what everybody's desire was. And I just got lucky. It's people like us, man. Yeah. This is not everyone. This is not everyone. You know what? That's uh, very interesting. I have to think on that deeper. than I, I have never, ever considered that. Yeah, it's like we're those like, you know, crabs trying to get out the bucket, right? Yep. Now, most of the crabs never get out. But that one crab trying to get out, that's a different one. Because the other crabs are trying to pull the crab back. Yeah. So that one's special. But again, most of them don't get out. It's so hard to get out, man. Like when I think back on, you know, all the struggles I've had, it was just trying to get out because it's hard. Like I had no help. What do you think was the catalyst for you? What was the tipping point? What, what, uh, you just get lucky. Was it intention? What, 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 what? I, okay. There's no such thing really as luck, luck, but I get it. You know, that you happen to be in the right place at the right time. Sometimes what was your tipping point? I don't think there's just a tipping point, man. It's like I said, we just have that personality. Like it was from the beginning, man. Like since I was young, I was always like trying to create my own paths, right? And people would be like, oh, you got to get back in line. You know, I used to get in trouble all the time because I was like, no, I want to do it this way. I think this is stupid. I think that, you know, just it was my personality. Like I just did not like to stand in line with the others and look forward. I was like, oh, let me look to the side. Let me move back. Let me, you know. Just do your own thing. Uh, it's just always been like that. Like I, I'm horrible in groups as a follower because I, I try to follow, but I end up somewhere else. I'm like, oh shit, where the group go? So I mean, you now you're, you're an expat, and you're living over in where Thailand. Yeah. What made you stop and say, okay, Thailand? Um. 
the ease of life here is best for me. Okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, and, and none of this I can get in the US or Europe for part being, right? Let's say um, I wake up in the morning and I have like a sinus infection, right? Mm -hmm. So healthcare wise, I can call the hospital and see a specialist in 15 minutes, hmm. be out and spend maybe 50 bucks. Is that with insurance or without? No insurance. No insurance, just spur of the moment, like something's bugging me. I need to see a specialist. Boom, I'm out, right? Super mm. quick. Okay. Okay, just, just one example. Wow. Just one example. One example, right? Um, let's say I want to eat. Yep. Within Chiang Mai, probably 300 restaurants with really good food will deliver within 20, 30 minutes. Right? And the yeah. delivery itself will cost me maybe a dollar. And I have some of the best food because it's super competitive here, right? Let's talk about laziness. I go to the store. I forget something in the shopping cart. I can get a grab guy to go pick it up for me and drop it off for like three bucks. Hmm. Or just go to a store, get something for me because I'm, I'm lazy. I have people cleaning for me. I have people, everything's super easy to live, right? And if I want to fly to Bangkok to see some friends or enjoy life, 80, 90 bucks. Right. Round trip. Things just are super easy. The quality is here. We have way faster internet than most places I've been in the world, but things are just easy. And the competitive spirit of the people here, Asia is usually more competitive now than the West. You know, the West is just, let's get lazy, no customer service, super competitive, right? Like, so I'll give you one more example of like trends, which I like, you know, when trends happen, because I like new stuff, I like to see it. When weed became legal in my neighborhood, 17 dispensaries opened up within three weeks. Wow. The same thing happened when bubble tea became big a few years back. But any, any trend that happens, people jump boom, on it. They jump on it. They start being creative. And I see movement. I see movement forward. You know, it, it's just. I wouldn't say they're a hustle culture because they're not ties will do everything they can to be as lazy and as you know inefficient as possible, but everything works. You know what I mean? Like it's a weird combination, right? Of like, how do we do the least, get the most, and have everything working? Which is kind of how I've been my whole life. It's kind of how you run your organizations a little bit. Everything, yeah. Because you know, like I always think, okay. I have a new experiment I want to do. It's going to take 10 hours. Ah, what if I didn't do almost any of that? How would I pull this off? Okay, now it's maybe down to two hours. Ugh, what if I even do, didn't do all that? Let me just see if the 80-20 works, right? And at the end, it's right. like 25 minutes and I still got the point. You know what I mean? It's, it's not like Americans have this thing. Europeans are the opposite way. But Americans have this thing where like you ask someone how you're doing. I'm so busy. Busy yeah. doing what? Fucking nonsense. Look at you. Like you're not doing anything. But always, you know, busy. I'm busy. Ah, I'm running around. For what? I'm stressed yeah. out. Can't sleep. You know, all this nonsense. In Europe, it's like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to relax. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can see it by customer service. Can fucking get anything done here. I find, like, it's a, it's a good in-between for me. So this... So... It's a good in between for you. And do you get bored? Yeah, but I mean, I leave a lot. I'll go to Bangkok. I'll go to the yeah, South. Yeah. Um, we'll fly to like Taipei for a month. We'll go to Japan. I'll go to Europe. I'll go to the US. I mean, I still fly out, but okay. on the day to day level, it fits my personality. Seems like I think that's important, right? You want to find a place that fits your personality. Yes. Just, just to live, right? Because there's no stress on my end then because it fits my personality. <sighs> I, can, I can throw money at a problem in Thailand and 90% of the things will go away with just that. You can't do it in America. If I get stopped by a cop, I can give him $15, tap him on the ass, and he goes away. No. But that fits my personality, right? Like, I don't get upset that I got stopped. I'm just happy. Like, 15 bucks. Okay, keep moving, buddy. 
you know interesting but again it's it's just Different. based on personality yeah it's you gotta just kind of, kind of get what fits you right like when i was younger new york fit my personality the hustle the bustle the fast yeah because i was i was you were very around. busy yeah i was busy and hustling there <laughs> yes. was no point to it but i you know i felt like everyone else yeah we're running at six yes. in the morning yep we're coming back at three in the morning great and after that i was like this is stupid and i left and you did travel around a lot i did i did i lived in, in atlanta for a while and i liked yeah. atlanta for a bit for yeah. a bit you know but then i was like i'm stuck in traffic almost everywhere this is dumb you do got to drive well, it, it was just, you know, for a while I loved it. And then I just thought like, this is just on my part. It's just stupid. You know, anywhere I want to go, it's like an hour and a half. I'm stuck in traffic. Like, why am I doing this? It's not you're even on, that great. It's not you're even on that 285. Great. You don't need to do that. You or through town. Right? Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. But I mean, you lived overseas in, in several places. I have. I, tra- I lived in Prague. I lived in Berlin, in yeah. Warsaw. Barcelona, Portugal. I lived in a lot of places and I like a lot of things about them, but they just didn't fit my personality for a long term. Right? Like, and when I, you I got stay. here, it took a little while. Um, Thailand is interesting, man. Like, when you come as a tourist at first, you're like, oh, this place is great. Then, when you start peeling the onions a little more, you're like, oh, this place is a shithole. And then, when you peel it a little more, you're like, oh, it's great again. Like, it's, it's just there's, there's different levels to Thailand, you know? And getting through that middle level is what's kind of you got to get through if you really get to like it. You just got to understand how things work. Mm-hmm. But I if I look around, lot, yeah, it, it is. It's, it's almost every place, but you know, well, there I are mean, not you got to figure out how it works. What the what are all the cogs? And, yeah, but there are not many cities where you come in and on the first glance you're going to be like, this place is amazing. Usually, you kind of get into that like, oh, I got to, you know, what's happening here? You know, often. Unless it's just new to you, right? Like if you've never been to Europe, you're gonna see all the st- structures and things. You're gonna be like, "This is amazing." Yes, I've been to all that. To me, it's just like, "Oh, it's another old ass building with no, with no aircon." It's very old. <laughs> that very was Portugal, old. man. That was Portugal. I'm like, all these places look nice on paper, but there's no aircon. They're all historical buildings. No one can make changes to them. The streets are shitty. They're so narrow. You can't get food delivered easily. Like all the stuff I looked at, I was like. I mean, on paper it works, but do I really want to get to that deep level and figure it out? Nah, I'm good. And I just moved on. And I moved out. Moved on. Yeah, and I went to Barcelona and I was like, Barcelona's cool, but do I really want to worry about getting pickpocketed every single evening? Maybe not. That bad. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, it's not like bad crime, but it's just, you know, like petty shit that like petty. Yeah. You know, what was like Vietnam? I've never had my ass touched so much as I did in Vietnam because everyone's trying to get my wallet out. Really? Yeah. Interesting. But again, it's just based to what you like. Some people I know like it. They get an ass massage every time they walk out. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I, I know people staying there like, this is amazing. You know, I don't need to go. Uh, I can go work out my back and it's just go outside and walk. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. See, and yeah. I was getting ready to go there. I mean, just keep your wallet and everything in the front and then enjoy. Oh, well, you know, I'm from New York, too, so. Yeah, but still, Sorry man, it like, is. it's it's so crowded. Like, you can't see or really turn around fast enough, so. Hmm. That crowd. Yeah. But again, it's just, I, I know people who, like, really love it. And this is why it's difficult to, you know, give advice, take advice, because like, you know, even with my business, like, I don't want advice from anybody else. Like, I know what I got to do. I don't care what you want me to do. I just don't care. Yeah. You know? thing. Yeah. But a lot of people need to get to that too, right? And like, it takes a long time sometimes. They're like always trying to get advice from like YouTube and all these coaches and stuff. And I'm like, I, I actually would pay if you just be quiet and don't tell me anything because it's, it's just a waste of time. You want to learn on your own? Well, I kind of know what I'm, where I'm going. Like, and you have no clue, one, what my business is like, what I want out of my business, mm-hmm. like what I want my life structured as. There are a lot of, you know, like nuanced things, which you have no clue. You know what? Going back to what we we're talking about, I think that is a very important part of growing 
up and growing old. I'm I really am more concerned with how my life is structured mm. than I am about the the hustle of getting the things and the and building out this thing this way and scaling as much as possible. You know, there's parts of that that just are not attractive to me. I want a specific structure of my life where I can get up and get things done by noon mm. and be done. And say no to whatever you don't want to do. Oh, yes. I said no to a project today, and it was the greatest feeling ever. You know? I think that's the, that's the liberating part, right? Yes. I think a lot of people never get that. Like when you can say no to things which you just don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Because I say no a lot. I say no a lot. And this is why, you know, there's a lot of opportunity in this too, right? So like, I'll give you an example, actually, too. Like, let's say you're on LinkedIn, right? And you start getting all those like, you know, promotional messages. Yeah, and I have an agency. I have an agency. So the number one thing is like, what if I can get you 100 leads per month and get you on the phone? And I was like, why the fuck would I want that? Get on the phone 100 times a month. Are you out of your fucking mind? Sounds like work to me. Right. But I'll give you the other flip side of this, right? Um, there was a course creator making um, courses for a dentist, right? And initially it was, I'm going to help you get more butts and seats. Of course, did not do well at all. What he realized very quickly was that dentists don't want to look at more mouths than look at more, you know, they actually don't want it. So the pivot was, how to start your self-storage business as a dentist, make money on the side, never look at another mouth again, and live the life you always wanted. And that took off. So it was a storage-based business, but it was tailored or it was targeted tailored for dentists. To, to, for that. Yeah, but what I'm saying is this mm -hmm. is when the life structure part is became so strong, the, became yeah. so strong, right? Yes. Because That's these good. guys wanted nothing except how to make money and never do this job again. Because it's so annoying. They wanted freedom again. So there's a lot of opportunity yeah. Yeah, with, yeah, yeah. with a certain age group where people start thinking, you know, because once you have some money, right? You have money in the bank. You don't need to work for two years. Uh, different priorities start taking, you know, they, they, they take hold. Like, you're like, I, I want my life different now. Like. Hmm. Like how how much longer do I want to be fixing people's teeth or doing speeches or dealing with clients? Like you know, there there's an opportunity there, yeah. just because we all go through this. Interesting. You see, got you got me now. You piqued my interest here because well, there's a new course we're thinking about, and it's for people over forty. Yeah, because you're at that stage now, right? And there's a lot of opportunity in that, and and. You yourself, as you're going through this transition, you yourself three months ago is your perfect audience before you were able to get through it, right? Because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you were thinking a little differently. You kind of figured it out, you know, helping others figure it out. Yeah. There's some value. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, you're right. You're all right. Because that's a big transition. That's a very big opportunity for you. It is a big transition. You know, it's you like know, when, when the you kids leave, it's crazy. Yeah. But the people that go through it, they all hit that block. And, you know, we're, we're very similar, you know, in the way like our brains work when things happen. Yeah. We get through them differently. You know, some of us have opinions, some You're don't. You're talking about humans. Yeah. Overall. Yeah, right. So that's, exactly. that's why, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, th I, th I think sometimes we miss the nature of the, the human humans are animals. And if you watch them long enough, you see a lot of similarities, a lot of similarities. Like you said, we get through it in different ways. We might put the puzzle pieces together in a different order, but the nature of, of, of humans is there's a, a, a line that runs through most of us that are, you know, we're very similar. You can at least the 80-20 rule 
Yeah. And, and when you apply the 80, 20 rule to the population, 80% mm -hmm. of the people cannot think for themselves. Right. Which means they're looking for someone who think for them. Right. Right. You know, so, they were good. So yeah. What? So, so someone like yourself, the one that thinks, you know, you easily have 80 people following you right behind you that cannot. Yeah. I remember, um, I used to tell the story of there's a reason why if you go into like, let's say a, a sandwich shop, it says yeah. order here and pick up here. Because if you did not have those two signs, most people would stand in the doorway and not move. Well, the way I say it, anytime I have a new client or anyone I'm talking with and they start talking to me about their audience, I'm like, there's just one thing you need to understand before anything else. People are weird. Hmm. And, you know, take that as you want, but, but people will do weird shit, weird times, weird places when you would expect something else. People are just weird. And there's nothing wrong with that. You just need to understand that before we think about marketing, copy, anything we do for these people, like first that they're weird. You just got to weird keep in, in which mind. way, though. I mean, like, what are you saying? So if I come to you, do you say people come to you now? Here's my audience or demographic, my avatar, whatever. We figured this out, blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. you're saying, hey, stop for a second and realize people are weird. How yeah. does that so, change the way we approach our marketing and stuff? First, it changes the way I want you to think about how you will interact with your audience. Okay. Yeah. Because you'll think like, oh, no one would ever email me about this. Oh, yeah, some will. Some person would never click on this image because it's not a button. Oh, they will. Yeah. Some people would click on the bite button because it's there. No, they won't. Yeah. People are weird, man. People are weird. They would do things which, again, to the beginning of the conversation, huh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> That's interesting. You know? So... What I'm trying to set you up is don't get annoyed with all the stuff you're going to see. Yeah, just people are weird, you know, and we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll, we'll funnel as many of these as we can, but there's going to be a few, you know, strangling just... and doing weird shit. Right. And don't worry about those. Just people are weird. Just be happy. We got most of them going through. Hmm. Okay. You know, I, I kind of set the expectation because, you know, that's the first thing you need to understand. Like, people are weird. They might get on the call with you, have no idea what they're doing. Like, why are they even on the call? That's just people, man. <laughs> They'll do the silliest things. And you just be like, okay, that's interesting. So you went through this whole funnel, clicked the three things, read four emails, and you have no idea what we're talking about. Cool. Sounds about right. It sounds about right. Because yeah, people are but, weird. You know, and as long as you kind of default to that, you just stop getting annoyed about things that happen in your business. You know, because a lot of people will be like, oh my God, like they said this, they did that. They, I was like, just people are weird, man. Like just, just, just get back to that level and just move on. So I'm not moving around and changing things just for every anomaly that happens. No, no, no. You're, right. We're getting that. We're getting, we're doing the 20% of effort to get the 80% re returns on this. That's what we're doing. Everyone else doesn't matter, right? Like, I'll give you one more example about courses, right? Like most people, when you look on their sales pages, it's mostly about them, the course, what's in the course and all that stuff. All yeah. things that don't actually sell courses. Okay. People want to see the outcome. People want to believe that it's going to work for them. People want to see that you've done this with other people, that there's a sort of a guarantee. And the less you actually show up yourself and what's inside the course, the better your conversions are going to be. People don't really? want the logical stuff. They don't want the logical stuff. They don't want the logical stuff. Man. They, they don't want, want like the more you start explaining all of your modules and things, the less your conversions are going to be. Hmm. It's actually all backwards, right? Only maybe 20% of the buyers actually care what's inside the course. Everyone else will be sold by maybe yeah. two or three other sentences which I usually the grabber and the sub headline that that itself will sell most of the people. Now with a course, there's another thing, right? Like it's, it's, I call it like the course engine, the method, right? People want to believe that you have a unique method and I, I kind of work with people to get to that point. Um, right. But once they believe in the method, 
any pseudoscience that you attach to it will just, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's good, that's good, and they'll buy it, right? It's more about just convincing them, like, your method is special. So, like, um, you know what, Leonex, right? That um, P90X Back stuff that day. used to come out before? Yeah, 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 yeah. So their course engine was basically muscle confusion. Right. That sold seven, eight, ten million worth of courses. If you just go down to like the, you know, the narrow it down to the one thing that sold all of it. They created a course engine, their method, it was called muscle confusion. That's how they got you sold on the idea. But we're not talking about sets. We're not talking about all this. We're going to confuse the muscles and they're going to grow. That's it. And there was a lot of pseudoscience behind why muscle confusion is a, you know, great thing. Right. But every, you know, seven, eight figure course has that. That's the course engine. That one thing that, you know, oh, it's the same, but different. But I believe it because they said all of this, you know, all these studies and, you know, and yeah, you didn't actually know what was in those courses. So, so why, why the long sales pages? So that's based on human behavior. Okay. Okay. So normally the way to get past the no and past objections mm -hmm. when you, when I speak to you is to address them. If I cannot talk to you, the way to get sub past someone else's objections and no is to make them consume enough of your content. The longer content that they consume, the more they're just automatically going to let themselves kind of like, okay, you know, by reading longer. So the longer the sales page, the more likely they're going to just kind of, you know, hypnotize themselves to buy it. And the sales page has all the objections being answered. As, as much as possible, right? Like yeah, you still I mean, want to go yeah. through, yeah, yeah. But, but basically it's the longer they consume your content, the less they want to object to you. That's the entire play with the long content. Is that the same you would think with social funnels, you know, where you're just doing a lot of content, 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 you know? Yeah. So this is the trust factor, right? Like it's, That's it's the trust factor. The, the longer people see you in front of them, mm -hmm. the more they trust you automatically because now they feel like, oh, you're kind of a staple. You're not about to leave and rip me off. When someone is broken, scared, and confused, everything is a scam. So then the only way to get that trust is either to have them consume your content long enough, mm -hmm. but on social, they can't. So it's got to be enough being in front of them, right? It's going to come out to the same, but it could take like a year for them to read enough and see you enough as if they would have read like 10 pages of your sales page. The concept is really the same. It's all about just like, you know, the, the, they hypnotize themselves like, oh, I, I've seen this guy enough. I believe him now. I trust him. I, I'll buy it. Obviously, it's much quicker with a long sales page, right? If you can get them, Great. you know. This is good. This is and good this is, stuff. And this is why webinars work too, right? Because you can get someone hypnotized by talking to them for an hour and a half. Could be nonsense. You see webinars. A lot of them are nonsense. Right. But if you're confident enough and trustworthy enough and you keep them engaged, by the end, they're just like, okay, I'll buy it. Hmm. Yeah. What about pricing? What's your what's your theory around pricing? Pricing really depends on the economy. Really? Yeah. I mean, if you're really looking to sell a lot, right? You want to like right now, mini offers are making a comeback. So what's the mini offer? What? Call the... traffic, call traffic straight to a mini offer at about $37, $47. Then you have oh, maybe okay. Oh, two that's order coming bumps. back. Yeah, then you get oh. like you add two order bumps and maybe two upsells, get the average sales price about 147. Mm -hmm. Acquisition costs will be around 80 to 110. You just scale as much as you can. People don't have much money, right? So they'll initially be like, yeah, but they still want things. They still want changes, right? So you see much less of someone new coming in now and selling $4,000 offers. Now, when Trump was around and people thought they were going to get rich for doing nothing, they did well. You they know, that sold, was, that they was, sold a lot. It's just based on economy and like 
And I think the only job the president has is give the country a vibe. Yeah. That they kind of can go behind, right? So with Biden, the, you know, doom and gloom and we're about to die, which is okay. We're going to get many offers then because people just want like little incremental, you know, you can still make money though. You know, you can still put like a 4K offer on the back end of this mini offer, you know, if there's enough trust and stuff, but economy kind of dictates unless you want to go against the wave, which I don't. I'll go exactly with what the mindset of the people is. I want to take the easy way out. And it might change in three, four years. It might change. We might get another guy like screaming that we're going to like be the most powerful and make money and stocks go up. And then everyone's going to be like, oh yeah, a thousand dollar offer. No problem. I'll be rich anyways. It's just based on sentiment. Okay. And just don't fight the sentiment. Just, just go with it. They want mini offers, give them mini offers. They want big things, give them big things. Whatever. We're just here to sell and make money and enjoy life, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking, I, I might, you got me You got me messed up, man. Every time I talk to you, you mess up everything. Thank I you. I think I've got it all, and then you <laughs> mess it all up. Dang. Uh, the mini Be, because, offers is back. Because I don't hold like uh two convictions right i just go with you know i look at what's happening and i just move with it so things will change right we speak an hour a year or two and things changed sentiment changed yeah like last year Absolutely. when we spoke it was it was craziness right now hmm, it is craziness but in a different way it's definitely a shift and and uh and it's fine and it's completely fine and it's completely fine you know, like I, I think I wrote in one of my newsletters, you know, like when your offer doesn't convert, when the economy goes down, here are the five things you need to switch in your offer, the messaging to get people excited at the end, because it's just different, nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And you'll switch it back again when the economy goes up. It's fine. But you have to have the sentiment. Correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's not that difficult, man. You could look at like the SP 500, right? If it's red for three months, I think sentiment's switching, right? If it's green for three months, it's, you know, like there's different things you can look at mm. if you can't really, you know, feel the market yourself to just like, oh, that I think that's, you know, giving me a pretty good idea. So these are the signals that you kind of are different paying signals, attention signals, right? To. You know, mm -hmm. like when the media is scaring us, you know, oh, big recession coming, stocks are down, all these people are firing. Okay, sentiment's going lower fine let's switch things people so are still going to buy things so if people walk in the room right now with you because you're the course guy with mm. a three thousand five thousand dollar course are you saying let's bring it down in pricing uh, and then do it on the upsell or put something in front of it to get people engaged is would that be a change too or is it just going to be the messaging and maybe start looking at certain things because you well, said the first at one thing, point you said price doesn't matter. Well, the first thing I'll ask is, what are you smoking? <laughs> what are you talking about? What? Well, the second thing, how much do you want to struggle with this? Let's say we don't want to struggle at all. I would make sure that the $4,000 offer, unless you already have a big audience and you have been converting with it, then uh -huh. we can switch messaging. But if you don't, if you just came to me like, this is my new idea, I'd be like, well, let's put that on the back end and come up with something that people will easily digest right now. Because again, you know, people are in different, you know, scenarios. Someone will be like, yeah, I've sold like 3 million of this and I just need to, something's happening. And I was like, well, I know okay, what's yeah. happening. So we need to switch that. But someone brings so entry. Them. So let's yeah, let's do that. Entry into market. I would be like, why don't you just go with a mini offer? Make sure you can get leads, not at cost, uh -huh, but at profit. Right. At, at profit. profit. Get that to seven figures and then sell your 4K thing on the back end. If you even still want to at that point, because a lot of the 4K offers have like personal time. Yeah. And I'm like, once you're making enough money and you realize like I don't want to do this shit, you might kill it. Okay. You know, just just approach the market the way it wants to be approached, right? You know. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying the offer is useless. You can still sell it, but maybe let's get better leads and make money with the leads. 
And so when you get these, I mean, you get these, all these leads, man, and they're, you know, grabbing up your $147 thing. What's next? Well, some people, once they scale to seven figures, there's nothing that, so they're happy. They're happy. So you can scale this $147 thing to seven figures and just let's go with that. Yeah. Um, If you haven't pasted your personal brand all over this thing, you can sell it. Like I know private equity groups, private investment groups who are my clients who buy these up. They'll buy the money factories. They'll buy the money factory. Then they'll come back to me and like, can you keep marketing this thing? So, so I know I'm like, I, you know, this can be sold. You can get this thing to a million dollars. Let's say maybe $400,000 in profit. Sell it for about three mil. I mean, wh- why else are you building this? Like, are you building this because you want to work more? You know, it's like, that's usually not what people want to do. Like, why don't you get, you know, make it, sell it, and then work on whatever else you want. I think there's a lot of people that uh, get started because they want the freedom of not being at their other job. Yeah, but if you have, wouldn't, let's say about two, three million dollars in the bank in the next three years, buy you that freedom yeah then you might as well go with it like a lot of people don't realize this can be an exit and it can there yeah i've never thought these. about that yeah there are I've groups buying these yeah as long as you don't paste your face all over it and if you do they might want to have let's say like a one-year plan with you where they keep you um they, they keep the ability to have you do certain promotions for them so you'll yeah. have to like produce like a couple pieces of content for whatever. But that's usually like a year. I don't know many people doing longer than that. So, okay, great. So what's the different approach then? Oh, gosh, this is this is interesting. So what's the different approach than if you're, if you're not pasting your face all over it, right? Because there's so many people that are in this influencer kind of vibe where it's like i gotta be the influencer and it's because of my influence that people buy what's the what's the other side of that just create its own brand you can still be behind the brand right but when you see someone really smart like a celebrity that knows what they're doing and they Mm -hmm. make up they they create makeup it's usually a brand it's not their name right they they push it everyone knows it's theirs right right like goop yeah, I yeah, get it. Yeah, yeah, Point they make snot. it brandable so you can sell it. And you can you do know. that with a course. Yeah, of course. There's companies buying these. There's venture capital. There's private investment groups. I know a couple of them. And they buy these courses, right? And they market them. It's a cash cow. Cool. Yeah. So I, I'm just saying there's, there's a whole so many different... little ecosystem working out over there. I mean, they yeah, do cause... that with the e-com businesses. You build an e-com business, seven figures. You exit. Absolutely. Yeah. So. But think about this. A course has no fulfillment. Right. Some of these yeah. companies that, that bought these are just like, this is insane. You know, cause they'll make four or 500 K from each one per year. And they're like, we don't do anything. They have like maybe two customer service people in the Philippines answering questions. I mean, it's ridiculous. So some wisened up and like, okay, so now we can buy SaaS companies. We can buy e-commerce. We can buy courses. They, you know, they're just looking for the revenue generators. Look, that's all we're building, man. Like I'm in the course niche, but th- this is just the same thing as you're building mm-hmm. some other type of, you know, it's just yeah. what I fell into. How did you fall into courses? I mean, it was in Atlanta. Uh, I was uh, doing SEO for a gym. And I think, I don't know if you ever met him, but um, Chi K. Lindsay, he was the Muay Thai champion and the manager of that gym. And I became friends with him and he was doing personal private one-on-one training. And he's like, Hey Tom, I like your SEO work. Why don't we build a course around what I do? I was like, huh? The hell is that? <laughs> a course? He's like, yeah, let's film videos and sell them. I was like, how the hell are we going to sell Muay Thai online? People can't work out, but whatever, you know, me I'm like, okay, cool. I'm bored. Let's do it. Then we filmed this whole thing. Nine months later, he's like, okay, Tom, let's market this. I was like, why me? I don't want to market this. Oh, you're good. Again. Sure. A year and a half of like, that was the worst decision of my life, man. It was the worst. Dude, it's the hardest thing to sell. Come on. It's like Brazilian jiu-jitsu or boxing. I'm going to teach you online. It's so hard, man. So I figured it out. 
then a couple of referrals. And then I realized I'm actually good at this because I started with the worst one first. Ah, so the other ones were easier. It was so much easier, man. Like selling like Excel training online is so easy compared to like, you know, I'm going to teach you how to do boxing online, which was like, Jesus. Oh, wow. And then eventually I doubled down. The second I doubled down on it, like the business just exploded because I was like, I, I just focused in. I was like, oh yeah, I do course marketing only. And people are like, oh, he must be an expert then. I mean, I was, but just by saying that. Right. As a, But I mean, Steve, you've taken the principles that you've done for all other kind of SEO. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But just instead of saying, I'm like, I do SEO and courses, I'm like, nope, I only do course marketing. And that's when just, dude, we've been booked without me doing much for like seven years, nonstop. Like, I really don't need to look for clients. It's just been on a, you know, I mean, we do produce results. I do some marketing and I'm good at the marketing. So I don't do much of it. Right. But still just narrowing down was, you know, insane. But now I'm like, I mean, again, I don't know if I want to do it because it's more work, but I could super easily say like, we also do, let's say marketing for coaches. Mm -hmm. because Which 90, kind of is the same thing. Yeah. Or I could do marketing for agencies like mine. Cause I mean, I've done it well for so long uh -huh. and I know how easy it is, but it's just, I don't know. It just comes natural. Like right now, our bigger thing, uh, idea is either we we're, we're going to buy some of these courses ourselves because i you know by doing so many hundreds of them like i know what yeah, sells right. just own them and do the marketing which we do a little bit but we might just double down on that or we right. just build more things we can sell multiples of right like one of the things we teach all the course creators is the course engine because that's the most important thing in a course without that you'll never get seven figures maybe we just create like a small mini product and teach people how to do that how to do course engines how to create the course engine because without that you'll never get past five figures huh. and yeah. it's something we just do normally right but it's like oh, maybe maybe i just pull that off and make that like a lead magnet and maybe something i can sell yeah why don't you do that and let me know when that's ready well the logo i sent you was actually for that because it was an idea i was like oh let me make the logo first and see how that looks Oh, the other day when you sent the logo. Okay. Yeah. 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 I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. Like ah. we, cre we run maybe five to 10 experiments every month. And that's one of the experiments we're starting to play with. Like, hmm, let's do it and see what happens. I mean, we do it anyways for every single client. If you need to validate your course, we make sure we put the course engine in place. If you're scaling, but can't get past whatever, we're like, well, we got to build that in because you will never scale without it. So it's just like a basic number one thing that we teach people. And I was like, huh, oh, why not? And there's different things like that too, right? Like even the way we explain like email sequences and sales pages, mm -hmm. most people go like, oh, you need these different, you know, components and things. I was like, no, you really don't. You have like seven psychological markers that you need to hit. You hit one in each email. You put the same thing in the sales page. So they correlate. So when people come from the email, like, oh, this is familiar and they read more. It's a very simple, easy to create funnels and sales pages and emails. But I'm like, well, normally people get templates. They have no clue why they're doing things. We actually just explain quickly why you're doing it and become so much easier. And that could be a little other product too. Super easy. We'll show you the template. We'll show you why, what psychological market you're hitting and why you need to combine the two. Make sure that the sales page correlates to the emails because most people do it separately. Right. They'll write the email. Yeah. And there's such an easier way of doing everything. And it all comes from me being lazy. That makes so it I'm, easier. I'm always trying to figure out like, what is the actual thing that's going to move the needle without doing all this nonsense? Find the shortcuts. I, I think you're in a similar spot now. This is why you're like really thinking, what should I do with my day? Because you don't want to do the nonsense. You want to just no narrow nonsense. it in. Yeah. 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 All right, before I get out of here, man, because this I, we got into an actual topic. Dang. Uh, well, All sorry. right. Before I get, but before I get, there's two things I got to ask you about. Okay. So first one is what everybody's talking about, of course, is our um, AI uh, mm. and chat GPT and Jasper and things like that. These AI writers, what are you thinking? What's the... Uh, What's your vibe on that? Is that the end of, you know, good writing? <laughs> no, no, no. We, we use it a lot. 
Do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we use it a lot. Tool. Like, so for example, like if we'll have a cold email campaign going, right? I might have the AI give me ideas on what problems the market has. It'll, it'll do a job of like a low level step really yeah. quickly, right? Well, let's say I write, you know, like the first email. The cool thing about that thing is I can be like, can you rewrite this email as Jay Abraham? Can you rewrite this email as Stephen King? Can you rewrite this? You know, and if they don't know how the person writes, mm -hmm. I'll first say learn the way this person writes. And I'll post like two or three pages of like Stephen King or whoever. Once they figure it out, okay, now we write the email in that. Board. So, so we can make, you know, split testing and things easier because it's like, okay, you know. There's different things we use it for. It's it's not bad. Like, it's not going to replace it. Like, it's not going to think for you, you know. It has to first steal my ideas to be able to then give them to me, right? So it's not a thinking thing. Like, you still need to think. But the, right. the lower end things, like, yeah, really easy. I think this is my only concern with the tool. Uh -huh. Is that, you know, Google has its own version, right? Google has its, well, a lot of them do, but yeah, Well, no, okay. but Google has its own version. It's had for a while. And it hasn't okay. released it to the public because the second this thing started interacting, became racist very quick. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember okay. this? Okay. Yeah, I remember that. And Facebook had to turn theirs off because they were talking right. to each other. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. So what Google is doing now is putting a lot of mechanisms in place to control it, edit uh -huh. it make it politically correct, blah, 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 right. whatever, right? That's a yeah. precedent, though. That's a precedent. So I think in about five to 10 years, the big battle will be who has access to the unedited AI versus the one that's politically and company controlled, the dumbed down version. Because there's going to be two different AIs running. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, one I mean, the business... The business intelligence in the public is going to be totally different. Yeah, is already but, is already yeah, right, but that's going to be a huge differentiator, right? Because the the unrestricted AI will have a lot more of everything access, and just you know, will will have much better answers to a lot of mm -hmm. things. Yeah, it might be you know can't give racist. it to the public because you it might know. be racist. Yeah. So well, it's it's not even like the racist part. It's like you know, someone can just write <laughs> in like. How could I kill a million people with a thousand dollars? And then the smartest one will come up with the idea. Mm. Where you know that's why you can't give it to the public. But let's say you're not that type of person, and you write, then how can I start a million dollar business with a thousand dollars? It'll also have the best ideas, not the one that the you know the, the right, dumbed down right, version. Right, right, right. Okay. So, so the access, who will get access to the one that you know can build a trillion dollar company for me versus the one that's like. Sorry, sir, I cannot answer this question for you. So that's my only concern because there's going to be two different running, you know, mm -hmm. and and the public will get access to the, you know, the dumbed, the dumbed down, down version. version. Yeah, yeah. Which but we then always the people, do. We always which is fine. Which is fine. But the thousands of people who have access to the other one, they're going to have an advantage over us like no one else. Right. right. Unless we can get access to it. That's that's my concern. Not anything okay. else with this. Okay. You know, but isn't but isn't that the isn't that the same issue we have just in general? We we are we are, right. but this is a new tool, and it's it's the same thing that's going to happen. But that's my concern. Yeah, I mean, if because right. if you look at the internet, even yeah. in the beginning of the internet, it was definitely a line between those yes. that were had access to it and those yes. that did not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I always wonder, like, is there any way I can get access to the other one? No, I'm sure yeah. if you can, you'll figure it out. Yeah, but but that's my concern, right? Like where people are like, you know, oh, this and that's going to replace jobs. Will it really? It cannot think. So yeah. by you saying it's going to replace your job, you're kind of giving me very quick insight of the type of person you are. It means you can't think. You're the same person can't create an opinion. You're the one screaming something that you heard on Twitter. And if I, you know, debate you, you have no idea why you're even saying it. Right. So fine. It's going to replace your job. Okay. Because... But for like someone like you, it's, it, it might yeah. either help your business or you just won't use it, but right. it's not going to do anything else. Like you come up with your own ideas. Yep. 
the the That's other true. thing that that it That's might so do cool. if people connect this thing to the internet mm -hmm. it's going to be very hard to easily you know without getting on the phone with them um to differentiate who's an expert and who's not because the ai will take my ideas give it to someone else he'll give it to 10,000 people who never heard of me and they'll be like oh he's smart you know what I mean? Like it's it's gonna yeah. be just harder to tell who the expert is. Yeah, yeah. Until you get that person on the phone and you just be like, that's crazy. Until you came up with these ideas. But see, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's what but, I mean, right? Like it's it's gonna mess up the the playing field, right? Like people will be super confused because the AI is gonna be like, oh yeah, I'm I'm giving the same stolen ideas to a hundred people and they're all experts now. Yep. So it's gonna it's gonna create a mess a little bit, you know. But all that's technology life, man. does. But that's yeah. life. That's yeah. life. You all can't... technology does. At some point, new technology. Uh, to me, it's fine. Whatever. You know, cool. I'm much more concerned about the the two AIs and the access than like this this nonsense. Whatever. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, if I can replace all my low level employees with it, thank God. Yeah, you're happy. I'm super happy. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, this is the best thing ever. But look it's big it's been unleashed you know people are playing with it yeah um again you know based on the intelligence some will figure out how to take advantage of it some will whine that it's not doing anything for them or try to copy other people this is just normal you know it's like when you know amazon and anything that anything else that does sell or do anything it's like some people take advantage some don't interesting you know yeah it's going to be the same thing all right, and then the last one has to be Twitter and Elon. Where are you at with that now? Hmm. You know, I did that Twitter experiment, right? I told you about before, where I, you know, get, got a lot of um, followers quickly with, you know, some methods I've been playing with. Yes. I did very little work. I think I added 25K followers. Um, and that probably added forty, fifty thousand dollars to my business and like almost no no effort. Okay, that's a mini course. Um Elon had zero influence on anything I've done, except for some reason the the ads that I was like running, which is only a couple bucks a day, so not a big deal. Yeah. They became less expensive. Really? So so I because... started getting like way more reach. Um, I think there was some, you know, some kind of like uh, pushback, right? Like these big companies, something against the Elon. Yeah, um, they quit. They jump. They jump ship for a minute. They'll be yeah. back. Yeah, to me, it's like okay, ads became cheaper. Cool, you know. Like, look, I get what he's trying to do. Um, you know, there's definitely a place where we should be able to speak freely. But again, we have that eighty percent of the population. You know, this is that same AI problem, right? Like. You let some of these people speak and you're just like, Jesus, okay. Yeah. I mean, why did we turn the mic on? Yeah. You know, um, thankfully we we have uh keywords we can mute. So I have a lot, you know, just muted. So I never see or hear conversations because you know, anything with a certain word just never pops up. Um so censorship is not necessarily bad, but we should uh, make the tools so that those that don't want us yeah to, yeah to, yeah to and right it. now yeah like right that. now like right now you have to do it individually mm -hmm. like i you know i have to do it myself like i'm like oh, i'm fucking hearing about like this or that or genders or crypto or something so i just you know or biden or trump it's all muted you know yeah. but yeah there should be an option for people who are a little more sensitive maybe and like just automatically let me you know let the tool yeah. help you just censor all this stuff that's like 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 the kid filters basically but yeah. this is more of like the the nonsense filter of uh -huh. like that 80 percent who just you know yeah conspiracies and all this stuff like look i get it there's a place for all of that um but there's only a certain amount of people who want to listen to it just because i say it's okay to talk about it doesn't mean i want to hear it yeah okay right good point you good know? point um but it's not easy to to do. No, you know, and I I think not on a, not on a massive scale of a of a Twitter. It's hard. 
it's it's hard. That's why you know I I definitely give him the benefit of the doubt. Um, I don't uphold him like a saint, like you know some people yeah, do, because yeah, um, yeah, yeah. he's not. I don't think he's a bad person. I think he's just a guy that takes on too many projects, doesn't get enough sleep, and thought this was a good idea at one point in time. And now maybe he's regretting it. Maybe he's not. But, you know, it was it was just one of those things. Maybe he got annoyed at someone else. Maybe this was an ego thing why he bought this. There had to be some of that. You know, like I said, he's no saint. He's a smart dude, but he's no saint. He's a yeah. human. You know, yeah. you always got to remember, this is just a human. And humans uh, are weird. You know, <laughs> and uh, humans are weird. So, <laughs> you know, just like Facebook is not even close to being perfect. Neither is Twitter. Yeah. Neither is LinkedIn. None of them are, right? None of them are. I, ju I just don't I just don't get this like um this putting this guy on a pedestal. I that's, think the second you do that, that's when the problems happen. To me, what, it's just yeah. like it's a tool. It works. Um, sometimes better, sometimes worse. I mean, do I really care who runs it? Not specifically. Um as long as did it I, runs. Did I like the censorship before? I actually didn't notice it that much because I'm just running it for my business, you know? Right. So I, you know, just because they were like targeting some groups, um, I didn't think it was right, but it didn't really bother me that much. Mm. And now if, if it's going the other say it's the same thing. Like I, I, you know, I still mute the keywords. I still, you know, I just, I don't want to hear nonsense. It does kind of come down to us, right? Like we, we got to take a bit of a responsibility. You know, if you don't want to hear it, mute it. There's an option. Bro. I don't know. There's a lot of influence. There is. There like is. And said, the problem you know, is that 80%, the 80%, the 80%, 80 that's is the easily problem. influenced. It's easily yeah. influenced. So that's the problem. So like I said, I just the like followers racism, will be there no matter what. Just like with racism, man, there's no solution for it. 